G'day Jabronis, it is a verb back with you again. Welcome here to um, a bit of a different video. I just realised I don't really need to wear these headphones, it would only be if I wanted to listen to battle music, but I don't really care about the battle music too much. Um, welcome here to some BGC. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, I think eventually what I'd like to do is stockpile a bunch of teams and get my friends to come on with me and kind of show them off. But uh, today, I do have one of my friends' teams I'm going to try out using. Just going to use it uh, blind gonna go into it enjoy it and then maybe I'll do a video with him where he kind of joins me for it but as you guys might not know uh, depending on how well you know me and my channel if you've come over from TCG you're probably like what is this content um, I actually did used to be um, a BGC player I quite enjoyed it I stopped playing it because um, there were no events in South Australia so I felt uh, it was very difficult for me to be able to get any kind of CP um, I have to go to all the events around uh, Australia and I attempted to do that and it just didn't work out too well for me so I just had to go to TCG instead but I always like VGC um, I felt like I was pretty good at it like at one stage I actually got selected for the um, World Cup squad of Australia so I feel like I know my thing when it comes to VGC and I am trying to bring VGC back to South Australia so we're gonna use a team here that my boy Curtis um, aka Scalvin has sent to me Curtis has been doing like amazingly well at um, competitions up in Queensland. This is the team that he sent me, so it's a pretty interesting team. Leaving the uh, team ID for you here if you would like to give it a shot. Um, really, really cool uh, concept though. So similar to um, uh, Wolf Glick's video about the team with Reuniclus, uh, this uses a similar thing, but it uses it with G-Max Hatterene. Um, so Hatterene can use Max Guard with uh, Trick Room, and then the Lipard with Prankster can copycat it, and then because of the eject button, if Lipard gets hit, then it can get the fast Trick Room up, and then automatically swap me out into one of my big threats. And I've got a lot of big threats on this team, <laughs> for sure. We've got the Lax, who is obviously always going to be an absolute monster. I'm a little bit iffy with the Lax on this team, though, just because... Uh, I really like it when there's a healing Pokemon next to it. We got Rhyperia, strong as, um, yeah, pretty straightforward moveset. Sometimes kind of wish I had Heavy Slam, but at the same time, I know Curtis is a great builder, so I trust his team. He's got a really cool Conk set, uh, being AV with a Brick Break, so you have a good matchup against the G Max Lapras. And then probably the MVP of this team, and a Pokemon that I really like to bring as much as possible, is this Vikavolt. A really, really cool Pokemon. Um, hopefully, we can put in some work. Super underrated, like massive Trick Room threat for sure. Um, but yeah, obviously, the, the main things we want to try and get off is the Hatterene G Max Smite is ridiculously strong in this metagame. Um, and has definitely clutched a few games for me. So, I'm going to go into Ranked Battles. I've never done this before as well, so I'm going to have like a really low rating, and it's actually taking me through the tutorial. Good grief. Maybe I should have done some games beforehand so I didn't have to go through the tutorial things, but I kind of wanted to go from like the start to now. So we're literally in beginner tier. I'm not sure, um, nah, people don't need to know this info. Only the people watching this video should know this info. You know, if you're not subscribed, you don't need to know the info. That's what I'm saying. So I'm pretty keen to give this team a try. I was really enjoying this team for a while. I may go back to this team and show it off to you guys. Um, I was smashing a lot of my local competitions. I'm not sure why no other teams. Actually, yeah, there you go. Cool. So we want team one. There it is. Bada bing. Yes, I'd like to use this team. Um, really, really like this team. Really like Trick Room um, in this meta. Let's go with the Ternatus 3. I don't really have like a personal favorite theme. I don't know if you guys do. I know there's a lot of VGC people who still watch my content. So just out of curiosity, what is your like ideal um, ideal track that you like listening to when you are battling? But we're going to search for an opposing trainer. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. Um, I honestly don't have a lot of expectations heading into this. I'm quite rusty when it comes to VGC. I know a bit about the game mechanics because while I was in Melbourne for the IC, I was staying with VGC players, so I just sat with them while they were, you know, practicing, and um, we just, you know, worked on how the teams are meant to work. But yeah, searching for a trainer. We've got a trainer. All right, dope. Zo Zoagi, Zoagi. Cool. So what you got? Okay. So interesting team. Um, not sure if it's in game. Looks kind of in game. Uh, let's see. So Hatterene looks incredibly strong in this matchup. Um, it just smashes through almost everything my opponent has. Uh, same goes for Rhyperia. Rhyperia is incredibly strong in the back. 
Um, then I'm just going to make a choice if I want to bring the Vicar Vault or Kinkelda, and I'm feeling Kinkelda. So I think Lipard Hatterene is for sure the lead. We max guard and we trick room. We go ham. And I think we want to have Rhyperia and Kinkelda in the back. I don't think Lax is very good here. I don't see myself getting off the combos. There's a Ferrothorn there, so that kind of limits it. And Vicavolt, while it is a good Pokemon, just probably just isn't the matchup for it. I think we're going to show off that combo with the Hatterene here of being able to go for the... Um, uh, the... The, the copycat with uh, Lipard. I used this team for a bit in South Australia and just some competitions and it was smashing people so I have no doubt it will do the same here. Ooh, he's got shinies so maybe he has gem this team. But we are going to lead with a Lipard and Hatterene. Feeling pretty confident about this setup. I'm so confident in fact that I don't actually think I need to... Um, I don't think I need the Trick Room super badly here. I think what I can actually do is, well actually, okay, so the, the tricky part with the Trick Room is that Ferrothorn could be slower, and that could then be an issue. So what I want to do is, with a Lipard, I'm actually going to charm the Ferrothorn, and then we are going to Dynamax and Max Flare. I'm not actually sure if Max Flare knocks out Ferrothorn. So, yeah. We're going to do this. Now, I just remember that Espeon has Magic Bounce, but I believe Magic Bounce only works if it targets the Espeon. So if I'm targeting the um, Ferrothorn, we should be fine. So we definitely want the G-Max Hatterene here. We are going to go for that Max Flare and hopefully pick up this Ferrothorn, but just in case, that's why I went for the Charm to be able to prevent the Ferrothorn from being able to us. As uh, we do get the Charm off, perfect. So the Ferrothorn's attack is lowered by two stages. So we shouldn't be getting knocked out anytime soon. What is the Espeon going for here? Just a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, that will not knock out my Lyopard. That's uh, fantastic for us. That does proc the Eject button, which is fine by me. And I should just go out, I think, to uh, Rhyperia here. And I think Kinkelda is super strong when there is a... Um, when there's a Espeon staring you down. So I'm going to go into Rhyperia. I think Rhyperia is a fine choice here. No real dramas, and then we are going to go for that Max Flare. Try and pick up this Ferrothorn right now. If it doesn't have the Aqua Berry, I think it should just die. And there we go. So Ferrothorn does go down. That is fantastic for us. Definitely the biggest threat to Hatterene that my opponent had on their team. Um, and whatever comes in next, I think we are well positioned to stop. I'm um, feeling like a Max Smite into Espeon could be the play. I just got to think about, you know, what my opponent's going to bring out. If they bring out Gigalith, then I'm probably just going to target down the Espeon. So we see a Sork come out. Now, Sork can have Sturdy. So, what I am contemplating doing here is going for a Rock Slide into both targets. And then going for a G-Max Smite into the Sork. Because Sork has Sturdy, right? But I don't know if this Sork is going to have Sturdy. I don't think I saw Mold Breaker. So I think this double attack into Sork is good. Um, and yeah, so if I bring it out of Sturdy, then the Rock Slide from my Rhyperior will be able to knock it out, as well as getting Chip onto the Espeon to assist with the late game. I'm feeling pretty strong though at this stage in time. Our opponent is going to Dynamax. The question is, who are they going to Dynamax? Is it going to be the Espeon or the Sork? I think it'll be the Sork, but we'll see. It is the Sork. Okay, so we do kind of make the correct play, I think, here with Hatterene of going for the G-Max Smite into it. I'm not sure what the Espeon is going to attack with right now. I guess we're about to find out. Uh, the Espeon goes for another Dazzling Gleam. Both my Pokemon can take that just fine. It's very good damage, though. We see a Hailstorm come out, so he's going for that Rhyperia. I do believe my Rhyperia should be able to live a Max Hailstorm, though. Rhyperia is incredibly bulky, and uh, that will proc my weakness policy, which is fantastic. So we do see some Hail on the field instead of the Sun, but we do see Rhyperia's weakness policy proc. Um, and honestly, if the Sork is, um, if the Sork isn't sturdy, oh no, okay, we hit both. That just knocks Espeon out, good god. Alright, Rhyperia is a monster, man. He's, he's an absolute monster. We're going to be able to G-Max Smite and uh, absolutely obliterate this Sork right now. There is no chance of that thing living. Um, and we are just running through our opponent here, um, feeling really good about this right now. The team is putting in the finest of work. Get a bit of hail chip, and no big deal. Like at this stage, we are way too far ahead in the game. It is a four against one situation. 
and both of my Pokemon are looking very strong. What is the last one? It is Haxorus, as I kind of expected it to be. So this is a pretty easy wrap up for us. We can just go with the Ice Punch from Rhyperia and the Max Smite from uh, Hatterene and that will wrap the game up. I kind of feel bad because this wasn't really a super competitive game, but I'm hoping that it still showed off uh, like the power of some of these Pokemon. Definitely um, being able to knock out that Ferrothorn at the start of the game was huge for us. Um, and you know Rhyperia showed off its bulk. So we do see an Iron Tail, but we are the Beery Berry, so we are going to be able to take this quite easily. No dramas for us there. And we are going to pick up a nice 4-0 victory for our first game today. Um, and it is going to be the Rhyperia with the plus 2 Ice Punch that should just one-shot this Haxorus with ease. <gasps> the Haxorus was focus sashed. Well, our opponent is being lovely for us and letting us finish him with another G-Max Smite. Smiting down upon our opponents. Good grief. Okay. So there we go. Game, set, and match. So that was... Uh, two kills... No, three... Three kills for the Hatterene and one for the Rhyperia. The team did the work. Obviously, though, I know that was an incredibly easy game. So uh, I don't want to check their team. That that was just their team. It's whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll continue battling. I want to jump into the next game. We're going to see how it goes. Again, I just want to keep on using teams and keep on climbing. So that should be, yeah, some good points. I do expect to face a lot of beginners. Let's uh, mix it up and go... Mm, champion. Yeah, champion's good. Champion's a great team. So I expect to win most of the games down here. Um, a lot of my plays should be incredibly straightforward against this competition, but I do like the premise of going straight from the bottom of beginner all the way up to master ball rank. That would be pretty cool. Whether it's with the same team or trying to mix up teams over time, I guess it's up to you guys to decide, but we got Andy. Okay. Andy, what do you got for me? All right, all right. Ooh, there is a Meowth down there. Interesting. He chose his team very quickly. I'm not sure what to expect from it. Um, I do just really like Lipard Hatterene again. I think they are incredibly strong as a pair in this uh, matchup. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot my opponent has for Hatterene under Trick Room. Is there anything that would outslow Hatterene? I don't think so. So that's really strong for us in that regard. Rhyperia in the back seems incredibly strong. I like Vikavolt, but it is a little bit weak against Coma O and the Toxtricity. So. I may have to go with Kinkelder instead. There's Lucario and Kamoa, so I'm a little bit worried about bringing Lax. So I think it is going to be the Rhyperia and the Kinkelder in the back, because uh, both of which can take some good hits and can deal some very good damage for me. So yeah, unfortunately Snorlax and Vicavolt are getting benched for another game, but I do try and play like three games each episode, so I'm hoping that these guys can get a good showing in the next one. So we're up against Andy. Let's see what Andy can do here. I'm, I'm hoping for the best, right? We're going to see what happens. Uh, I feel pretty good though, like, right? Like, Hatterene just seems really strong against Andy's team. So let's see what he leads with. He goes out with Toxtricity and Komoa. So this is really strong for us. Um, we can just bring in Hatterene, we can G-Max, we can go for Max Guard, um, and then we can just go from there. I actually feel really strong. We see an Air Balloon on the Toxtricity, so... Does that change my plays is the question. I think I still... So what I could do here, actually is I could, oh, Curtis is online. I could fake out the Toxtricity. I, this is what I want to do. I want to fake out the Toxtricity to burst its balloon. And then I'm going to Trick Room up with my Hatterene. Yeah. Because I don't really fear what the Kamoa can do to um, to my Hatterene. I don't think there's any real attack I can go for. It'll be scary. We do see a Poison Jab come out. This will hurt, but like it won't kill me at all. Like, it's not going to be close. As long as it doesn't get the Poison, we're fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. So we get the Trick Room up, and now I feel pretty strong about the situation, right? So we can just G-Max Smite into the Kamoa, um, and that feels pretty strong. Now, the tricky part for us is going to be the Toxtricity, but I think if I Snarl the Toxtricity and we're G-Max, I feel like we should be able to live a Poison hit from it. And there is always the chance that after G-Max Smite, um, the Toxtricity won't actually be able to attack because it could be fully confused. So we are just going to go for this attack, like maybe it was better to go for the copycat play, I'm not really sure, I still think this play is fine, um, we're going to see what my opponent chooses to do here, but we are just going to be in with Hatterene, so we know we're definitely knocking out the Kamoa here, um, even if the Kamoa is sashed, we do have the Snarl coming out from our Lipard, as long as the Kamoa isn't like knocking out the Lipard, which it could do this turn potentially, but 
I do feel pretty confident about this. Uh, um, upon reflection, yeah, I should be slower than a Foxtricity with my Lipard. So Kamoa should just drop here, as it does do just that. And then Lipard, as far as I remember my speed tiers, should be slower than a Kamoa. So we'll see. So Kamoa goes down, and then the, uh, the Toxtricity is confused. Actually, Toxtricity is slower, interestingly enough. And it does go for the Overdrive, though, so we are going to be able to tank that with both Pokemon. And uh, this is why this is okay for us, because we have the Eject button, and uh, immediately I think we will choose to go into Rhyperia here. Uh, it puts an insane amount of pressure straight onto that Toxtricity. Should be able to easily knock it out with a high horsepower now that the Air Balloon was broken after the Fake Out. Um, and now we just got to see what my opponent wants to send in, and whether I can just knock it straight out with my Hatterene. I do feel pretty confident here. Um, and even if Hatterene can't knock it out, then um, potentially Rhyperia could just knock it out. So like this situation feels pretty good. I think I could just go for a Rock Slide into both. Um, and then I could just go for a Max Mindstorm straight into the um, Toxtricity here. Just guarantee Toxtricity is dying and then the Rock Slide chip onto the Galissapod might actually weaken it after I knock out the Toxtricity to the point where it procs an emergency exit, which would be really good. We could see a first impression from the Galissapod onto my Hatterene. I would be fine with that. I don't think it's too detrimental. We do see a Dynamax from my opponent. What are they choosing to Dynamax? I really hope they haven't chosen Toxtricity. That would be mighty, pardon me, mighty unfortunate for them. I'm hoping yes. It is a Galissapod. Good choice for my opponent. We are going to see what this Galissapod goes for, though, because like I said, if Hatterene is faster than... Um, is faster than Rhyperia, then we can get a big amount of damage off on this thing. So we are going to see Hatterene is faster, so we do knock out the Toxtricity here with absolute ease. And the uh, the most important thing about this now is that Rhyperia should go next in line, and it should go for Rock Slide. Now, I don't imagine Rock Slide will do half to Glissapod, but if it does, it'll proc the Emergency Exit, which is huge for us. So we're going to see what happens right now. Rock Slide comes out. Ooh, it doesn't do half. It does, like, barely anything. And we're going to see a Max Geyser... I would assume this is going to be knocking out my Hatterene, but he could go for the Rhyperior instead. He does go for the Rhyperior instead. Rhyperior is just absolutely obliterated. I'm kind of fine with this, though. Like, we've lost one Pokemon, and our opponent is down um, two. Now, granted, Lipard isn't really doing much in the back, so we are kind of on level pegs, but I think I can just send in my Kinkelda here because the Trick Room, yeah, Trick Room is still up. Um, obviously, I can't use Mark Punch, but that's okay. Uh, I think Kinkelda, judging on the rest of the Pokemon that my opponent had in the back, should be able to deal with anything else that they bring out, as we are going to see a Lucario. Yep, perfect. So we can deal with that with ease. Um, Kinkelda can just go straight for the Brick Break into the Lucario, and uh, we can go straight for the... Hmm. We are in Psychic Terrain, so I do think the Mindstorm is the play against the Galissapod here, as it will proc... Well, the Emergency Exit doesn't matter now, but I do think that... Judging on how well it took that physical hit, oh, my opponent tries to extreme speed in psychic terrain. That is embarrassing. That is not what you want to see happen. Um, and we do get off that mine, so it doesn't knock out with the Lissapod, but I think that's okay for us. We do get off this Brick Break, which should just one-shot this Lucario, as it absolutely does. So Lucario goes down, and now I feel like we pretty much have this game in the bag. Even if we are knocked out by a Max Geyser here from this Lissapod on our Hatterene, I do feel fairly confident. We actually see it go into the Kinkelda, and Kinkelda survives. So that should just wrap up the game. I do believe there is a turn of Trick Room remaining. Uh, Hatterene will go back down to normal, which is no issue at all. Um, and we should have one more turn of Trick Room to kind of punish this uh, Galissapod. Unfortunately, Kinkelda doesn't really have a strong attack that it can use against Galissapod right now, but my Hatterene can just go for Psychic. The thing I'm just going to watch out for is... Um, uh, what I want to just quickly go back to is how many turns of Trick Room we have on the Info, Kinkelda. Uh, so this is the last turn of Trick Room. So my opponent could max guard, but I feel like they don't have it. So I'm just going to go for a Brick Break on the Galissapod, um, as well as a Psychic, because I just feel like I'm going to be able to uh, knock the Galissapod out. So let's just choose a Psychic here. And uh, that should just wrap up the game. If they have max guard, oh, they just forfeited. So there you go. Um, yep, they just didn't want to see the Galissapod die, but we do wrap up another victory. Um, if they hadn't, well, it didn't really matter about the extreme speed for the Lucario, it was going to get knocked out regardless. Um, the early game was a little bit dicey by me, maybe. Like, I, I probably should have just played it safe, and I should have gone for the copycat play instead of letting my Hatterene get weakened, because if my Hatterene wasn't weakened by the Poison Jab from Kamoa, 
I think I would have just wrapped up the game a lot quicker and easier. There wasn't a whole lot my opponent had to uh, beat that. So yeah, I think I should have gone for the copycat play for sure. Um, I don't know. I think so at least. We're up into beginner tier 2. Nice. So, ooh. Huh, we got some BP. Nice. Uh, so we're going to go into one more game. We're going to choose in the fog. Nah. Zashi and Zama's Enter. Sure. Sure. Let's go with Zashi and Zama's Enter for the last one uh, for your listening ears. Um, I know these games haven't really been ideal. Don't get me wrong. I, I know they definitely could be better. But uh, I'm still pretty stoked with how it's turned out. Um, and I guess I'm just looking forward to this series. I've got a lot of cool teams to try out. If you guys have any cool teams you'd like to see me use, then obviously you can hit me up on Twitter, you can um, hit me up on Discord, or just in the um, yeah, on, in the video description. Just, well, not description, the comments, God. In the comments, just let me know. Um, if you would like me to use a certain team, I'm down for trying anything. Um, I think that, you know, we're in a pretty good format right now for VGC. I think there's a lot of cool Pokemon that can be used and used quite well. Um, I do like that as a bit of a change of pace from the TCG where um, when Zashian V was kind of released, it was the most broken card in the format. So this is a good change of pace for me. I'm liking it. I'm liking it as well. We got uh, Mixie, rank one. So we win this and we should almost be out of the boonies. This is a very competitive team. I like this a lot. So this is what I want to see. Uh, they've got a lot of things that can threaten my Hatterene. Um, I think, though, if I led Hatterene Kinkelda, I wouldn't be as concerned. I think Hatterene Kinkelda is very strong against my opponent's team, not Vicavolt. Kinkelda. I think Hatterene Kinkelda is really strong against my opponent's team. I do like Rhyperia in the back, too. Seems incredibly strong. Um, do I want Lyopard is the question. Probably not. I don't see it being super impactful. Um, I could bring the Vicar Vault, but again, I don't see that being super good either. I actually kind of like the Small Axis matchup. I don't think Lyopard is needed. I don't think Vicar Vault is going to have a good matchup here. I'm, I'm a bit sad that Vicar Vault didn't get a good matchup at all in these games, but I do just feel like Kinkelda Hatterene is such a strong lead against anything my opponent could use. So we're going to find out, though. So Mixie versus your boy, and we're gonna see how this one goes down. I feel pretty good heading into this one, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the matchup uh, of Hatterene and Kinkelda against anything he leads with is just good. <clears throat> so like Lapras, Dragapult, this feels fine. Um, we just lead Hatterene Conk. <clears throat> and um, honestly, I think uh, I don't even need a Trick Room. I think all I wanna do here is go for a G-Max Smite into the Dragapult. And then I expect him to go with a max resonance from his Lapras. So I'm gonna immediately go for a Brick Break. So he's probably gonna go with the Lapras and set that thing up. And I'm gonna try and catch him out with that. The Hatterene being boosted should be able to easily tank whatever the Dragapult wants to go for here. If the Dragapult Phantom forces, then it's a little bit unfortunate for me, but it's no big deal. It's no big deal at all. I think being able to... We should be able to tank both things. We'll see. Depends on what my opponent chooses to go for, obviously. Um, we do see the Phantom Force, so I do kind of waste a turn here with the Max... Uh, the G-Max Smite, which is really unfortunate. We do see a Surf from Lapras. Uh, interesting choice by my opponent. Uh, both my Pokemon can take that quite easily without any issues. And we are going to see a Brick Break from Punk, which should do about half to a Lapras. Ooh, that does a lot more than half. So we're in a pretty good spot now. G-Max Smite unfortunately is going to miss the Dragapult. But now we're in a position where we can G-Max Smite into the Dragapult again. And we can freely just fire off a Mark Punch into the Lapras. If the Lapras wants to swap out, it's no big deal. It is very weak and it can be picked off later. And we should be able to live the Phantom Force and then we'll knock out both of their opening Pokemon. We do see a withdrawal. What are they going to choose to go out to? Toxtricity. This is kind of fine because we get the chip on Toxtricity, which I'm kind of cool with. So we can fire off a Mark Punch here, which I'm pretty fine with. We get a bit of chip on that thing. No big deal. We do see the Phantom Force come out into Hatterene. Ouch, that does hurt a bit. But at the same time, we can now go for that G-Max Smite and uh, pick up the Dragapult. Unless, of course, it's Sash, which would be surprising. And it is Sash, so there you go. It is surprising. How about that, guys? Sash Dragapult. How about that? But however, that does mean we get confusion on both of them, which is fantastic as well for us. Um... 
We do see healing from Toxtricity, so a black sludge. So I think my play this turn is to... Um, I think it's to max Mindstorm the Toxtricity Rat. Because if the Dragapult disappears with Phantom Force, there's a chance I could just confuse itself and die. And I think I want to Bulldoze, because even if the Dragapult doesn't go for that, then Bulldoze should be able to pick up both if they double target down my Hatterene. So I think this is the safe play. So we are going to see a Dynamax, it looks like, on the Toxtricity. Now the Poison move could knock out my, um, my thing from here, but I do feel really confident that this is Toxtricity. So it is Toxtricity. I feel really good about this. Um, Lapras is in the back, we know that. And if either of these hit themselves in confusion, this is a phenomenal turn for us. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, we have two things of confusion to go through here. First, Dragapults. Uh, it does get the Phantom Force off. Okay, so, Dragapult's not the issue. If Toxtricity hits itself in confusion here, then I'm feeling amazing about this turn. So let's see what happens. Does Toxtricity hit itself in confusion? It doesn't. So we get the Max Ooze off. This is a little bit weakened, though, so maybe Hatterene can live. We are a bit bulky. We do not live, unfortunately. I don't know if that was a crit. I severely doubt it was a crit. But we do now get off a full-powered... Well, I say full-powered. It is slightly weakened bulldoze off though on this toxicity and the best plus for us is that we're going to send in Rhyperia next and then that just obliterates both of these things. Dragapult avoids but we do get a fat bulldoze off against this toxicity. Does a really good chunk of damage there which I'm super stoked about. So we can bulldoze again and basically knock out toxicity if we need to. Um, and I can just send in Rhyperia now and I'm feeling pretty confident with Lax in the back. All we know like we know Lapras is in the back, we don't know what the other thing is. All I know is that Phantom Force into either of these guys is fine. Both of them can take it quite easily. So Rhyperia comes in. We know that Bulldoze is going to pick up... Um, let's see. What What's more accurate? High Horsepower is more accurate, cool. So we want a High Horsepower into Toxtricity, for sure. And then we're actually going to bulldoze because it will also proc our Hyperia's weakness policy, as well as knocking out both of my opponent's Pokemon. So we're going to see Dragon Ball Confused. It does not hit itself in Confusion. We do see it hit into the Hyperia. It does a decent chunk of damage, honestly. A bit surprised by that. Does Toxicity hit? If, it, if this hits itself, it's really good for us. No hits of Confusion at all. Crazy. We see a Phantasm come out. That does hurt, but it will not knock us out. Conkelda's. Uh, Bulldoze will also not knock us out. So we see Defense Fall for both of these guys. Not too big of a deal. We will see the High Horsepower come out and knock out that Toxtricity. Fantastic for us. Um, Toxtricity is going to go down, which is awesome. And then we're going to get the Bulldoze knockout on the Dragapult and proc our Weakness Policy in the process. So Bulldoze comes out. We are not going to die to that. Absolutely not. No way, Jose. And then we're going to proc our Weakness Policy and put it under pressure because they know that we can just go for the Muck Punch and knock out their Lapras. Um, so that means that the last Pokemon they have needs to be attacking into um, Rhyperia, which is great for us because it means Conk survives, right? So if their last Pokemon can't beat Conk, then we basically have them checkmated. So we're going to see what my opponent wants to do here. Um, they have a Lapras, which is very, very weak, which could go for Parasong, but it won't really help them because we have three Pokemon. And it's a Ferrothorn. Okay, cool. So Rhyperia actually might still outspeed this Ferrothorn. Not 100% sure. Um, but I think my play is going to be to protect the Rhyperia and then just go for the Muck Punch and knock out this Lapras. I don't see any reason to risk anything else. Um, yeah, if the Lapras doesn't have Protect, we just knock it out for free here. If it does have Protect, then we burn a turn and it's fine, and then next turn we knock it out and we go from there. So yeah, Rhyperia gets his Protect off first, no chance of that Ferrothorn knocking us out now. We can just go straight for that Muck Punch to pick up the Lapras and get that knockout, and I think the Ferrothorn would have targeted down the Rhyperia on this turn. We are going to find out, though, as we do see an Energy Ball. <laughs> okay, Special Ferrothorn. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. But now I think we're in a pretty good spot. Rhyperia may just still outspeed the Ferrothorn, and so we can just fire off a um, just fire off a High Horsepower into that Ferrothorn slot, for sure. And then we can also... No! I can go back. It's fine. I thought it was like Showdown where I can't go back. I don't know why, my controllers are a little bit laggy when it comes to selection. Um, and then Conk can just go for a Fire Punch here. Straight into the Ferrothorn slot. So yeah, this feels pretty good. This should just be the game wrapped up. I assume my opponent might just forfeit here. Nope, they're gonna let it happen. So Fire Punch comes out, it's gonna do an absolute shit ton to Ferrothorn. Won't get the knockout. We do get some Iron Barb damage and we're gonna see. Does the right Pira outspeed the Ferrothorn still? Uh, we see Rocky Helmet, sure. And no, it doesn't. So Ferrothorn is actually gonna be able to get that knockout. A little bit unfortunate for us, but I don't think it's going to matter too much um, because we just have the Conk that can go for Fire Punch, so no big deal. 
at all. Really happy with that player. Like I said, I felt that Concoda plus Hatterene was very, very strong in that early game. Um, I had to Dynamax, I feel, because it was just a play. Uh, I could have tried to predict the Toxtricity, honestly, but I don't think it was worth trying to predict. So we could just go for Lariat and uh, Fire Punch here to wrap this game up, for sure. Um, no reason not to go for both of these and just finish the game. I assume my opponent might just forfeit, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to wait and see, and nope, they just let it happen. So boom, Kinkelda gets that knockout, and that is going to wrap up the game. So that was probably the closest set that we had out of all of them. I uh, definitely got a little bit dicey with the Bulldoze play, almost knocking out my Rhyperia, um, but it all worked out in the end. We did get the victory over Mixie, and the team does go undefeated. Obviously, we are in beginner tier, though, so I would expect the team to go undefeated, but I am pretty stoked with how um, that first set of games just went so yeah super happy with that um, hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you like the video subscribe all that good stuff and i'll be back with some more um vgc content and tcg content in the future but i really hope you guys enjoyed this different kind of video anyway i'm the bird i'm out of speed.